Hi, I'm Chris Cummings from Falcon Store Software, and we're here to talk about what we're seeing today in the data protection market. I'm joined by Mark Delsman, who's our head of engineering and product. Mark, thanks for being here. Thank you, Chris. And uh, we had hoped to have him here live with us, but we're also uh, joined by Abdul Hashmi, who's our head of customer success and support, and he's actually off on site with one of our larger customers talking to them about their future planning. Abdul, are you out there? I'm here. Glad to be here. Awesome. Chris. Thanks for joining us today. So want to get your insights into the market and what you're seeing out there and, and the direction we're headed. So Mark, I'm just going to start with you, which is, you know, enterprise IT in the COVID era has been under a lot of pressure. And data protection seems to be one of the key areas that you just can't get away from. So what's happening in the environment now? Well, Chris, uh, one thing that hasn't changed at all in the data centers is just the massive amount of data growth right. that the enterprises are having to uh, put up with. Part of it is because of increased regulation mm -hmm. where uh, enterprise customers either aren't sure how long to keep their data or they just feel it's safe to keep it a long, long time or forever. Uh, so that contributes to really exponential data growth, uh, and, and that's been unchanged for several years now. On top of that, IT budgets are, uh, have been very constrained or have been reduced. So you know, there used to be a metric around the number of terabytes per IT mm. uh, professional, and, and that's just gone out the window too. Uh, so IT shops have to do far, far more with less. Mm. On top of that, this last year with COVID, we're seeing uh, that uh, many employers don't want their, their IT uh, personnel in the data center. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is right. driving not only uh, trying to figure out how to get it done remotely or whatever, but uh, a real sense around automation too, and how can they automate a lot of the functions that used to be done manually by somebody running around, you know, up and down the aisles in the data center. Right. Abdullah, you're talking to these customers every day. What, what, what are you hearing? I think uh, precisely what uh, Mark is talking about uh, is the, the, the massive growth of data where they have to, uh, some of our customers, they put it partially in tapes. Uh, some they get their deduplication, uh, but it's not as optimized. Uh, so, and, and, and some they're having issues for the restore. The personnel can, especially in this COVID uh, era, the personnel cannot be on site. And so, yeah, a lot of these complexities and, and these things, which is where our store safe shines, right? That, that, that gives them answers to all these things, basically reduction of data up to 95% through global data uh, deduplication, um, still being able to write to your legacy tapes if, if you want, or um, store safe can help you bridge to the, to the cloud to take mm -hmm. it there for, for long-term archival, still in dedupe secure container uh, format. Um, so addresses all the budget, the, the, the data, massive data growth, and as well as the, 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 the restore uh, where you know, manual is required, manual um, personnel is required that cannot be on site. Okay, so let's get, that's, that gives an overview kind of, of where we fit, but let's get specific. So Falcon, the store safe is software, correct? And, and what's it usually attached to? What, where's the data coming from? What's the data going to? And, and where's it going for, for longer term protection? Yeah, so as, as a company, our focus has been always on data protection and, and uh, backups and archives. Uh, this is what we have been doing for the past uh, 20 years, over 20 years. And StoreSafe is built upon uh, the, the successful architecture of our VTL, uh, due to which we have uh, you know, thousands of customers and uh, over exabyte of data under management. Uh, basically, StoreSafe mm -hmm. just drops into an existing customer's backup and restore environment. Nothing has to change on the, uh, the front end. Um, mm -hmm. we can, we're certified with legacy SAN storage, over 200 uh, uh, if you check our certification mm -hmm. metrics. So wow. we're really hardware agnostic, both from from how the server can run the store safe in, in, in a VMware or, or or hardware, but also on the storage, the one that we have certified. So it really drops into the customer environment. The backups are now coming to store safe. You get the benefit of that global deduplication repository that runs on, on the faster disks, uh, where your backups are now totally free to do the job that they're supposed to be doing. Uh, which is uh, complete their backups in the allotted backup window. 
But now with store safe, whether you want to write to the tape, you can still do that. Or we can actually bridge it to the cloud. Uh, and, and I just uh, want to mention here that with the start of this unfortunate uh, COVID uh, uh, event um, in 2020, we have seen a lot of our customers and especially our, our, our partners and MSPs who serve these customers, they actually you know, convert and import their physical tapes, convert them to virtual tapes, take advantage of this dedupe containers. Uh, mm -hmm. And, and Forsyth is, um, is uh, well placed for that and, and able to do that. Yeah, we saw massive adoption of the cloud in 2020 when I just looked through some analyst data. Uh, On-premise continues to, to shrink a little bit and the cloud has just gone up and to the right in terms of adoption. And it seems like that's coming finally in the area of backup and archive too. You know, Mark, Abdul talked a little bit about deduplication. I remember talking about deduplication 15 years ago. Um, you know, so it, it's, you know, what's new in the area of deduplication? And uh, great question. Uh, Falcon Store, uh, you know, we've been around more than 20 years and 15 years ago, as you said, dedupe was really emerging in the market and Falcon Store was one of the, the original uh, developers of deduplication. We have um, yeah, over a dozen patents related to deduplication yeah. and we've continued to enhance it over the years. Uh -huh. A lot of times it's, it's now considered almost uh, you know, standard in a product or whatever. But one of the th things we really provide uh, that a lot of other vendors don't is the consolidation of a lot of backups across diverse environments. Mm -hmm. So, uh, you know, if you have Commvault, you have Net Backup, et cetera, they can all converge into StoreSafe, as Abdul was talking about, and we can do a global deduplication mm -hmm. across all these different sources. Uh, we see with uh, many of our customers up to 95% of the data is deduplicated out, mm -hmm. which gives you a much smaller footprint for all of that valuable data that, that you're keeping around. So we really feel that, that deduplication, while it, it may show up on the data sheet on a lot of different products, it's the fact that you want to get uh, a lot of diverse uh, types of data together so that you will get the most out of your deduplication and therefore your smallest uh, long-term archive mm -hmm. uh, with the lowest costs involved. Okay, so yeah, lowest lowest cost for the long-term archive, but also low cost for what you put on the, the heavyweight sand today so that you can get that kind of speed of backup and speed of recovery. And, um, and I would add to that too, Chris, yeah. that it's, it's also tra transmission time speed right. across your networks. Right. If you're moving a lot less data, you're loading up your networks far less. Right. So Abdul, I know you're out there modeling what uh, a customer can expect out of their, their backup uh, uh, environment and what they're going to get out of deduplication. You know, you're talking to folks about what they're seeing every day. What are they testing? Yeah. I, before answering this, I just want to go back to our deduplication and why it's it's different than, than some mm -hmm. of our competitors is, is as, as Mark mentioned, not only are we consolidating the dedupe on the back end, taking that, that resource intensive operations from the front end uh, backup software, uh, but also it's it's not only the tapes, but as well as, as the NAS shares, right? So it's different workloads that we truly uh, um, you know, can take advantage of this global deduplication. But the real um, benefit uh, of our deduplication is because we have every backup software aware, content aware parses within our deduplication engine. And so, for example, a tape comes into the deduplication repository for, for, for the duplication process, we check the signature, you know, the, 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 the volume header on that tape. And so we understand what backup software format has been used to write, write this tape, and then we invoke that particular content-aware parser. That in itself gives you 30 to 40 percent more chance of decreasing, um, uh, increasing the data reduction. So, so that's why our deduplication is is uh, we believe is the best in the industry. And and like I said, this has been proven over the past 20 years, right? Um, and so, as far as the customers are concerned, so customers, yeah, obviously they look at this advantage, right? It's not like I'm just getting a global quote unquote deduplication pool for my tapes and then there will be another one. It will be a silo, just like they're getting it right now um, on the front end from, from the 
backup software solution, but now on a bigger scale. No, what we are providing really that your NAS resources in, in a complex environment is not just a tape uh, a format, it's also NAS. A lot of our customers we're dealing with, they're having NAS resources as well. So truly uh, leveraging that, that potential uh, and, uh, global duplication for all their workloads. Uh, Okay, uh, and, so yeah, I okay. keep hearing you talk about tape, and uh, I'm just amazed. Uh, one part of me is still amazed that we're still talking about tape at this point in time. And, uh, you know, Mark, is this really the best that, that we can do for uh, long-term data protection? I saw a report recently about tape volumes only increasing and, and continuing to go up from our friends at Enterprise Strategy Group. Um, and yet, we think about the cloud every day. So where, where's tape really headed? It, it, that's an excellent point. Uh, and yes, there was, I think it was Christoph Bertrand that yeah. recently published a ESG piece about that tape still has, has good value. Uh, you know, it, it's, it's uh, certainly continued to advance in capacity, um, but there, there's also still the, the me mechanical nature of it, right? You, mm -hmm. you have a tape, you've got to do something with it. You have to right. you know, truck it off site. You have, um, there, there's not the sense of automation about it that we can offer on the cloud side. There's also a, a lot of growth and competition among the cloud vendors uh, mm -hmm. now also. Uh, we see some of the, uh, the smaller clouds that are growing extremely rapidly, like Wasabi, mm -hmm. uh, that focus just on the storage piece of it and can pr provide excellent value also. So the dynamics, I think, are really changing. Mm -hmm. and, and what we see is enterprise customers that have to go through this refresh cycle when they are uh, making a decision of whether they're going to upgrade to the newest, latest uh, LTO, uh, tape libraries, et cetera, that that's the time that they really take a look to see if other technologies uh, may provide the same value, but also allow them to have the automation. And as I mentioned before, reduce some of the uh, the people in the data center and the, the, the time that it takes in the data center to mm -hmm. manage this. Uh, so uh, in essence, a lot of the, the, the tape growth has really shifted from, I think, the individual enterprise customers, maybe more to the back end of the large cloud vendors. Right, this is kind of the little secret that, uh, that the industry doesn't talk about is, where is the tape going? Is it, it's moving from, enterprise IT data centers and moving into the big cloud data centers and then you put the tape in and say the tape is the cloud uh, providers problem not so much my problem it seems like that's the direction we're heading the other thing that we hear about a lot in the market right now is just the the ransomware you know we hear a lot about ransomware attacks and and you know the concerns about data security so you know where do you see this going and how does Falcon store play in that area mark well, certainly the number one thing you need after a ransomware attack, I mean, assuming that it's gotten into your enterprise, is yeah. you have to roll back, right? And you not only have to roll back, you have to be very precise about how you roll back mm -hmm. uh, to you know, the prior point in time. Uh, some systems are going to, different, going to have different ages where they, they've been infected. And it may be that ransomware has been in your uh, environment for quite a while before it was discovered or before it was activated also. So being able to keep a deep history mm -hmm. is going to be very important to recover uh, from a ransomware attack. And you want it to be quick. Mm -hmm. you, you, you gotta get back online, you gotta get back to your customers. So uh, uh, once again, the automation of having uh, you know, very fast restores it is a huge benefit for our enterprise customers. Mm -hmm. And so as opposed to tape, which could be offsite, it could be uh, something that you have to search through, having uh, uh, you know, a, a, a cluster with your, your backups on it and be able to retrieve those very, very quickly on your internal network might be uh, a much quicker resolution for you. And Abdul, when you, when you address the security and data protection issues with you know, the customers that were getting implemented or the customers that are growing, you know, what's the one thing that's top of mind for them that's, that they most need answered uh, in, this, in this day? 
It, it's the same in the context of basically an attack that happens, such as a ransomware. So, so if we just kind of break that down, the ransomware attack will be happening on the front end, on the uh, on the front end, which is the application side. Uh, we don't anticipate anything uh, hitting um, our software because, first of all, we're running uh, running on a, a hardened. Um, uh, Linux uh, server that is being um, patched um, regularly. The data format we're keeping, the deduplicated data, are are on the block uh, uh, level. They're not on the file level, which are susceptible to run somewhere. And then that, that format, the way we keep it in the deduplication de repository, actually makes no sense to the original file system uh, uh, either, as long as uh, it's not matched with the correct VIT, right? So, so those are always issues. So it's not more issue on the on the on the store safe side, but how can like Mark alluded to, how can customer restore? Majority of our customers they keep two copies, whether it's a primary copy on the primary side and a replica in a DR center, or a primary copy here uh, on the primary side, um, uh, another copy in the cloud. And so we have a, a way of. If the primary copy has been in, infected from the source, um, then it can be restored from the DR site, uh, be it in, in a cloud or, or a replica. So clearly, we we go through these scenarios and and kind of hash out what are their their restore should look like. Yeah. Got it. So Mark, you talked about automation a couple of times, and that's certainly buzzword bingo in uh, enterprise IT these days, but. Talk to me about what Falcon Store actually does as it relates to automating this, this backup and, and archival process. Sure, uh, let me start with just a couple of comments. We, we have a user interface that we call StoreSight, and StoreSight is, uh, through a single pane of glass, is able to uh, control any of the Falcon Store uh, software nodes that you have across your, your enterprise. So a single mm -hmm. pane of glass to start with. Okay. Uh, you're able to set up policies for uh, what you want to have happen to the backups when they come in. These policies can be segmented by, um, you know, basically uh, a view into your, your data, where it came from and what you want to have happen mm -hmm. to it. Uh, we also allow you to directly input your uh, cloud logins uh, through store sites so we know what the destination points are too. And then we run uh, policies basically uh, that will control the flow of data. Uh, the same is true on recovery. You, you're able to uh, see a menu of potential recovery points, the, mm -hmm. the times that they occurred, and be able to basically point and click and, and have it restored back to the origination point uh, very easily. Once again, this is a single pane of glass. This could be something you're logged into from your home office mm -hmm. uh, or in the data center. Uh, so it gives us not only a policy-based movement of the data, but also a very uh, uh, concise uh, look mm -hmm. into your data for managing your archive. Got it. And Abdul, one thing that, that relates to this is, you know, even if companies go through this process and they do all the, the right stuff to back everything up, um, what prevents any of that data from, from going sideways, if you will? What, what does Falcon Store do to check the integrity of the data to ensure that when that dark day comes, the data is there and, and ready to be uh, restored. Yeah, we. That, that's a, an excellent question. Uh, we have different validation me uh, uh, mechanism in place. For example, if you were to re um, export um, containers out to the cloud, uh, you can run a checksum based on policy um, and the time of your choosing, or or on demand, and to run to make sure that the the, the containers you have. Are, are valid. Uh, it, it, it checks against the, the, the hashes and the metadata. We do the same thing for NAS and we do the same thing for, for tapes. So, so we kind of are giving you a picture of where your backups are. But of course, you know, as any uh, IT organization, uh, validating your backups from time to time uh, is, is still holds true even in today's age with all this automation. Uh, and um, for the most part, our customers are pretty good following that. Okay, that's great. So, you both have brought up containers. It's like we're we're hitting on all the big the big uh, uh, buzzwords out there. Is containers? I mean, I know what containers are in the primary, uh, you know, 
the primary act application sense in terms of building uh, applications in a new, in new way uh, comprised of microservices, but how do containers even apply in the backup and archive arena, Mark? It, exactly, this is something that definitely needs to be explained because we do fundamentally use containers in a different way okay. than you would most normally uh, hear them being used. Uh, we put the deduplicated uh, data, uh, what I'll call a, basically a virtual tape, but it's a, in a deduplicated form. It becomes the payload of the con containers. We place it in, in this container format. We call it a secure data container because it, it, the use case for our containers mm -hmm. is a little bit different. But the fact that it is a container also means that this image can be executed. So we can do some really interesting things like what Abdul was mentioning. We could run a checksum on it at a regular interval to make sure that the data hasn't changed. Mm -hmm. uh, being able to run a checksum on a physical tape is, is <laughs> almost impossible right. uh, to do, uh, certainly in an automated manner. Uh, so, so we can use a secure data container also to help manage or uh, uh, take care of your archive. Mm -hmm. So we think it, in addition to the concise format, it also, uh, the secure data containers are highly portable. They don't rely on the underlying infrastructure at all. So as an example, if you're using AWS as your archive, and uh, f uh, for some reason you get a better deal over at Azure, you can actually move your containers from one to the other uh, mm -hmm. and fully supported uh, with our with our archive. Okay, so containers actually does apply in backup and archive. I learn something new every day. Um, you know, what I'm hearing from both of you is there's, there's still a huge need for uh, modernizing what's happening in data protection. I would have thought that this had all been done, but we have some large, large enterprises that, uh, you know, they have lots of different types of software, they have lots of uh, different targets for this, and it just gets more and more complicated. But you know, this has been the year of adopting the cloud. Let's talk a little bit about the future. And um, where do you see, where do you both see this going um, in data protection? Well, maybe I'll, I'll jump in to, to start with. Uh, yeah. the, the more data that someone has to manage with less resources, causes this opportunity to continue to innovate. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and certainly being extremely efficient um, with what might have been a traditional backup task within the company, uh, th there's value there that customers are very interested in. In, in addition, we've mentioned the automation, being able to have a policy-driven system mm -hmm. uh, uh, is something that our customers are very interested in. And then I would point out the secure data containers. You know, I, I've alluded at least th that it does a checksum today and it can be policy driven checksums. So think of it as you will uh, uh, as a screen with, uh, you know, with a field of green showing all of your secure data containers are in right. good shape. If one does go red, that, that you have the opportunity to go out and fix that. Mm -hmm. uh, Secure data containers in the future will be able to offer you a lot more innovation so you can take your passive data in the archive and turn it in much more into an active archive. Mm -hmm. uh, and we see this as continuing to add huge benefits uh, to customers and what they want to do with their precious resource. Right, and Abdul, when you're talking to these customers, uh, I'm sure you know these are demanding customers. They want to know the value that they're getting out of this. So. You know, what are you seeing in terms of providing data back to them and helping ensure that they get, you know, that they put Falcon Store to the test and really get value out of, uh, you know, this, this modernization movement? Yeah, I mean, you know, as we all know, cloud does provide their, their own uh, protection of, on their end, but at the end of the day, any IT in any organization, whatever data, data they put into S3 or any cloud storage, they're still responsible for protecting that, right? Uh, what stores save, uh, you know, you still need an enterprise solution to be able to, to protect it just like as you were uh, on-prem. On it's just that you're getting the advantages of very cheap storage in cloud, the scalability and the ease of acquiring more storage as you need, right? So those are all the advantages right. that you get. But they, uh, the store save then provides that, right? They, 
we we work with customers most of our customer customer that i'm working with right now actually they have tapes they have been put into tapes the beauty of store safe is we can still continue writing to the tapes but we can take you through those baby steps for the workflows that you feel comfortable that you can take it to either hybrid or private cloud and uh, or public cloud and test it so that's what we're doing with the customer and that's what we're, we're going through the, the entire life cycle of the product how they see their backups uh, make sure their backups are completed in time and how they actually see their their restore to make sure their SLAs are met and, and uh, through those uh, secure data containers. Because remember, those are deduped and sending data to container undeduped means more bandwidth and also more cost right. on the storage site, right? With a 95% reduction, you get the, the benefit of both. Right. And, and Abdul, I, I uh, thought it'd be appropriate to say, you know, I call them secure data containers, but I don't think we explicitly said everything is encrypted. It's mm -hmm. encrypted yeah. at the source in your own data center before it's sent out to the cloud. Right. It stays encrypted. The keys stay back in your data center. So, so you, you have a very secure format uh, yeah. that we are moving around so customers can feel more comfortable about data outside yeah, of your data center. Point. Yeah, and, and one additional point on that. Uh, you know the cloud S3 or Glacier or any storage, they will charge you pennies to put data where they hit you with bigger fees is when you retrieve them, when you want the restore. Uh, right. right. And so with this 95% reduction, that egress fee is dramatically um, decreased. That, that, that's, that's really the point. value add with your customers, yeah. That's right. So as part of the modernization journey, it's not just about making sure the technology keeps up with the pace, but also that you can optimize on the cost side, because we know that enterprise IT shops are under a lot of pressure. Uh, to do more with less. Uh, yeah. It seems like that's, that's a consistent theme, COVID or not. So I just want to thank Mark and Abdul for taking some time to talk with us today. And, um, you know, we're looking forward to engaging you guys in the future. So thanks very much. Thank you, Chris. Thank you, Chris. Thanks. All right. Take care. Thank you all.